Um, I'm Celine Hole. I'm actually one of the clinical nurse educators in intensive care at North Shore in Sydney. Um, and so this skill station is about getting your hands on the machine and actually learning how to set one up. Have you? Have you? You haven't touched one before, no? Oh well, no. Haven't set one up. Yeah. Cool, excellent. Have you set one up? Oh, good. It's funny, I teach this session at work with all the registrars and they find it so, they, they find that it's all quite clumsy and quite fiddly and then they say at the end of it, oh, okay, I actually have a newfound respect for how long this process actually takes. So when I say to a nurse, set up dialysis and it doesn't happen immediately, I can understand why, why now. So I suppose first things first, you've got your on off button around the side there and then it runs through a little self test. Um, that it will bring you through to this screen. So you've got the option to have a look at some therapy information here. So um, with each of the modes and therapies that the machine does, you can actually tap on the spots and bring up further information. So what we're going to do today is we're going to set up CRRT um, in CVVHDF, so using convection diffusion of ultrafiltration and using citrate as well. Um, so if we tapped on that there, then it will bring up a little um, bit of information about this and you can even um, tap on the graphic to zoom it larger, which was some of those um, graphics that you saw in the previous session, um, to help explain how it all runs and where it all links in and how it connects. So let's get out of there though into the info session and continue through to the um, actual setup and loading the set into the machine. Um, I was going to demo one, but do you think I I'll just get someone to do it? Go. So it all comes bundled up actually in a plastic sort of container, all in neat little coils, and you just take that off and it's all kind of on this nice cassette, which you just load onto the machine. Um, unlike some other machines where it comes in bits and pieces and you have to connect it all up, the Prismaflex actually comes all assembled for you. It's just a matter of routing things all through the right pods and um, and clips and things like that up here. So does someone want to have a go? Yeah, come on up. So it's normal to have it turned on and ready before you put this on? Yes, so what you do is not quite, we're not quite there yet, so we actually need to do some things to start with. So if you want to hit the continue screen there. So a new patient here. Then we need to enter in a patient ID. So we'll just, I don't know, make something up there. And enter. Now we need to enter a patient weight, so again, um, Hopefully you've got some way of finding that out, <laughs> whether you've got lovely new beds like we do that actually weigh the patient or not. Um, this helps you get your, your renal dose right. So You're going for actual body weight or ideal yeah, body weight? Or it, it is actual, isn't it, Tim? It's not ideal. Most people go for actual, yeah. but they have sort of a cut off around about 130 kilo mark or something mm. like that, where they say they're going to go above that, we'll just stick to 130 mm. kilo so um, so I don't know, what, we'll pick 80 or something like that and enter. We also need to enter the uh, most recent hematocrit that we have so that that helps us with our calcium compensation. Um, so why not 30 seeing as it's in there? Okay, check your data, confirm. Okay, now you get to choose your therapy. So CRT, oops, did that work? Oh, yeah. And so, yep, good. All right, so then you get to choose what sort of anticoagulation you're going to use. So, um, certainly at the place where I work, we use um, citrate with calcium in a um, specific syringe that's delivering the calcium. Not many places use um, citrate with an external pump. Um, and I guess there's a systemic option, but what we're going to set up here is going to be citrate, so that's our regionalised anticoagulation. So you want to hit the top bit so there. Um, so they send up these red messages to make sure that you read them and, and you, that they're warning messages. Um, so basically you need to, whenever you've got a, an alert like that, you need to ensure that you've read it and you're confirming that what you want to do is definitely what you've selected. Um, and then we get a summary of what we've selected here and what um, sort of fluids we're going to be using. So in this instance we're going to be using Prismo Citrate which comes in on our pre-blood pre pump line um, 
of 18 millimoles, which looks like this. And so you've just got to make sure what you're using the citrate configuration is the same as what's up here. Yeah. Because you can change the configuration, you can run on different citrate solutions. Yeah. And so if you're not, then you're giving the wrong dose of citrate if you, this doesn't match what the machine thinks it's going yeah. to be running with. Yeah. It's the same as also with your calcium in, in, infusion as well. Yeah. Exactly. So you're probably going to need to add potassium to that bag. Yeah. Um, and then we've got our calcium solution, which we usually run just a neat, um, yep, 10% in our syringe. And our po post replacement fluid will be calcium free. It depends again what your soft, how your software is set up. So in the unit where I work, we use we actually use normal saline as our post replacement fluids, whereas here we'll be going to, we're going to be using Hemocell, which has a little uh, that's got a little bit of calcium it's in it, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. Okay, good. So if we're happy with all our fluids, then we'll say continue. This is the, the, the fun bit, the fumbly fingers part where you get to actually set it all up. So it gives you the overline, out, outlining points that you're going to do, but again, each one of them, if you touch that, will give you a, a more detailed image of what you're supposed to be doing. So the first part is snapping your cartridge into the machine, which I actually find this a bit fiddly. That's the bit of yeah. <laughs> so what you need to do is actually sort of squeeze these little yeah. pincer parts in together, and they slot into there and there. And you need to make sure you're putting it in the right way because there's a barcode at the top that the um, reader up here is going to be reading oh. to. The patient details and that barcode are linked. The, the details that you entered at the beginning, and that's stored on a chip. Um, yep, absolutely. So if there's some problem in. For all your arms and all your events and stuff like that, yeah. And pit load? No, yeah. So now we need to go through each one of these right. points, yeah. So if you want to. Steps below, then press layer. Ah, so you can just work your way down the chair. So tap, the, tap each button as you go so it can give you a bit of a zoom in of the graphics. So we're actually up to the. Yeah, that's good. So pop that one in there. So now they want you to attach the pressure pods. So this pressure pod's not actually in use um, for this circuit, but that's the correct one up there. That's your effluent pressure pod. Yep, yeah, that's it. Look at the colour of the two ones at the bottom, yep. it's showing you've got the red line on. So, yep. And they sit roughly on the right side of where they're going to be going, so yep. you can't... Um, that's the filter one that you're putting in there at the moment. They won't let me do it? No, yeah. well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you try and stretch the other one across to where that one is, that position... Yeah. So that's you can't a sampling port, that, that bit, oh, that's yeah. your pressure port. But yeah. you can't muck it up. So doing that's pretty simple on this machine. Yeah. Other machines you have to take a little cap off and put it on and close a little gate and click it down and things and they can pop off and rupture and it, it can be pretty horrific. So this is actually really nice and straightforward. Um, that's that step done. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, so well third done. point. <laughs> so that's your yellow line, your effluent line up the top there. And you've got to root it in as per the diagram with the, that going all in the correct direction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Now the terminology the company use here is floss this through the, mm -hmm. fl so floss it floss, through. Yes. Yeah, no, they're just the actual tubing. The line, the tubing. The line goes through. Yeah, yep. pull it back just through a bit. Just have a look at your picture then. Yeah, it goes up through there. Now. <laughs> yeah. okay. Sort of, except that blobble comes on top of it. Just, oh, ah, yeah. 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 That's it. And floss it through. So that's the blood protector <laughs> looking at the effluent coming through to make sure there's no blood in the effluent. Right. right. If, if there is, then you've got a rupture. Yeah, yeah. And that just sits in there. Yeah, that's right. You'll be an ICU nurse, yeah. That just sits there. Yeah, that just sits there. Yeah. to learn. Okay, good. So we've got our three pressure pods in. Next point. Temporarily hang the axis of the Y onto the primary. Okay, that's around here. Yeah, so it's the red and yellow line. We say axis and return on our CRRT machines rather than RTR and Venus. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, all, it's, it's all Venus. Yeah. 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 yeah, it just hangs up on here. Just the. Just you pull the tapes off. That's uh, yeah. okay. 
And this, you'll see that you so it so doesn't it make like sense at the moment. The yellow, you, can clip, you can clip it into that, yeah. but all we're really doing is just getting the whole line out of the out way, way from where right. we right. it. So, right. so just pull the tapes off this one as well so you can stretch it up to the hooks. And that will be reconfigured because you can see at the moment you've got the access line and the effluent line together on a Y piece, yeah. which obviously makes no sense. So eventually you'll be taking off that effluent line when you connect it up to the VASCAF. Okay, so next point. Mm -hmm. So that's round on the blue line around the side there. Yep. And if you go from the bottom in first. So I said it'd be quite easy to break some of that plastic with. No one's broken that yet. No? No. no. You could try it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a challenge, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, and I've broken one when I've had the same set for teaching out for about 100 million circuits. Oh, you mean the set you've broken the set? Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's no, they, they, probably they, because they, they deserve to break that one. Yeah. So this little part now needs to actually go up onto the return it's pressure it's port. So you need to push it fairly firmly up in there. And then you actually screw the blue cap down over the top of it. The yeah. generation chamber must be taking bubbles out. Yeah. yeah. It takes bubbles out, but also we control the fluid level by pushing buttons on the screen, which you'll be able to see on the next one. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, next point. All right. Clamp tests. So this again is if you get, so that's your blue or your, yep, same line over there that you've just put into the... Checking colours. So, mm -hmm. so you've got... It's a bit hard because this bit's clear now, but yeah. what we're looking at is this return line, so it's a blue stripe on it. So, yeah, it's been plugged under there. so that, yeah, that keeps in design. Just push it on. That's it. So that's and your return line that's going yeah. back to the patient. So should you have yeah. bubbles and clots in there, things in there, that you, you don't want that going back to the patient. So those series of clamps, etc., will lock down if ever you have a yeah, any of the little bits of shots. Power failure, yep. shots, everything like that. Right. So basically, it's, right. it's, so it's just, just the system's stacked. And now we have no, nothing can happen to the patient. Yeah. If that shuts down, then there's. So you can. You obviously have the opportunity managing the circuit to return blood to your patient if you feel like the circuit's nearing the end of its life. <laughs> um, if something like that happens, you can't actually go through that process and return the blood. And so that circuit holds a volume of about 100, 150 mils. Um, so you've got that volume lost to the patient. And then I believe on this particular heating circuit, that'll add another 70 mils. So you've got almost a, you know, a whole pack cell of blood that you've lost if you do have a mis mishap like that. And it happens Reason. enough, yeah. If your patient's coughing and carrying on and your vas cath's no, no good and you're having trouble, it'll, it'll clag up quite quickly, actually, if you haven't got the blood pump running. Okay, so last point there, open effluent scale and hang collection. So that's that little bag there. That's your... A lot of the machines you'll find have actually got labels written on, there aren't been labels. Mm. They're not officially labeled machines when they came out of the factory because different scales will do different things in different modes. Yeah. Right. But if you run it in the same mode all the time, then it's fine, you can label things. So, but if you ever ever unsure, you look at the pictures and show you how to yellow. Yellow's for wear. Yeah. Yellow for wear, <laughs> yeah. so delicately put. Yeah. So you've actually got to pull that sl slide forward towards you, and then there's a handle in there that you can, whoops, throw on the floor like that, and link into the bag. Five people. Five yeah. And then you push it in. Put the handle down. Put the handle down. Yep. Ah, the handle. Yes. Yep. That's it. Cool. Very good. Right. You ready to load? Yep. Cool. So hit load, and the machine just winds it on for you. Which is quite cool. So what it's doing first, it pushes this plate all the way out. So when you load it up, if you push it up against the pumps, it wouldn't have loaded properly. Yep. So it pushes it all the way out, it'll stop, so it looks like it's broken, nothing's happened, and then it pulls it back towards the machine automatically itself. And then what it's going to do then after it's finished loading here, it's going to do two checks. It's going to check you put the right set on from the right therapy. Because if you do plasma exchange or hemo perfusion or something like that, if you put the wrong set on for the wrong therapy, you end up killing your patients. So if you've got the wrong set on for the wrong therapy, it'll say warning wrong set loaded. And the only option would be to throw the circuit away and start again. 
If you haven't loaded it correctly, you'll have the warning setup error alarm. So it'll tell you step by step what you needed to do to fix the problem. If you couldn't work it out, you could just press unload, it takes you back to the screen that we were just on, you'd fix it and you just press load, um, load again. So you can press load and load on all day. Yeah. So that's reading the barcode there, that's all yeah. the details and the, the flows that it can do. And then from there, once you're happy, you press confirm again. So, this is where we get to actually connect all the fluids, which we might not actually puncture them, is that right? So that yeah, we can we'll get back to it, because we're we nearly at we 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, but we can certainly discuss what goes where. Um, as Tim was saying, it's all beautifully colour coded. So, you've got your effluent line on there, which is eventually going to be connected up with your effluent um, line on through the top here. Um, you've got your white scale here, so if you pull that forward there, that's going to be your pre-blood pump, which in this case is our citrate. So mm -hmm. citrate's so going as, to be coming... So sorry. as you're going along here, we press two buttons again. First yep, of all, you put your, your litre bag of saline on, drip brightening, so normally bag of saline. Yep. With heparin in, if you were using standard CRT stand, if citrate, you wouldn't mm. put anything in there. Right. Yep. And, and it lets you continue even though you haven't done it. Like yeah, so yes, right, yeah, yeah. And then it, now we're going to put our citrate solution on. Because we've told the machine we're running in citrate mode, it's giving us a bit more information. It's telling us that the pre dilution one is our citrate solution bag. So our PBP is our white scale, as Selena said. So you've got the white scale, we've got the white line with the white, the white clamp going onto it, and we've got our citrate solution that's got the white bung on the end of it as well. So it's all sort of colour coded, exactly the same sort of thing with our calcium free dialysate solution, it's got a green bung on the end of it, that would go into our green line, which would then go into our green yeah. scale, and run with, and now we put a bag of hemosol or a bag of saline onto those. So I've got this coloured line, I'm not thinking it would still let me put the wrong bags on it. Yeah, you, you can put whatever bag, whatever scales, so you could do that, and people have done it in the past, yeah. put the wrong bag, citrate one on the dialysate scale, vice versa. The benefit of running with the fairly isotonic solutions are, if you do that, you don't sort of, the, your circuit clots off, so that's usually the worst case scenario. Yeah. You don't disturb all the electrolytes, you give the patient a cut of the rest and something like that, so yeah. it's a, um, that's the only problem. So the machine knows if I've got my green line, if I've attached it up to my purple scale, it can, turn that, it can work that out, but it can't tell what bags are on scale. So it's just relying on you knowing that the citrate goes on the citrate yeah. scale and, and, and work your way along yeah. on those things as well. So what we would just normally do is just hang the bags on there, you press continue, then you'd load your syringe, so you'd have a 50 mil syringe with your calcium chloride going in here. <coughs> and then the only thing with our citrate is normally when we were running, <coughs> um, putting our syringe, syringe driver in here, we would attach our heparin syringe up to our little line here. So your heparin would go into the circuit here, so it mixes with the blood here before the blood goes up into the filter. But we can't be putting our calcium into there because otherwise you've just done the all the good work we've done with citrate. Yep. So we have to give the calcium separately. The calcium goes either, to usually into the central line or the three-way connected, three-way triple lumens. So to do that, then there's a separate calcium infusion line. So we, what we do is we attach the syringe up to the calcium infusion line, and then we connect that up to the patient when we started the machine up. So you're sort of it's just running it. The only problem with the calcium chloride, of course, it's, it doesn't like running with much else, so you, you have taken as a dedicated line up to put the calcium back into the patient. Centrally, centrally. Yeah, centrally, centrally. yeah. It doesn't quite definitely centrally, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just conscious of time a little mm -hmm. bit, but is that clear where things, how it all runs? So the red line is connected to your vascular access and sucks the blood out of the patient with a negative pressure that's generated by a large blood pump. Your citrate or your white pre-blood pump line joins it right up close to the patient here on the access line and then runs down through with it up through your pressure pods through your filter and out the other side where it will come through your de-aeration chamber and then back to the patient in the blue line. So that's your sort of blood side of it. Then you've got your um, dialysate side of it which runs through the green line which is there. Yeah, so that will draw from your um, Prisma Cal or your chosen dialysate bag, yep. which obviously has no calcium in it in this instance because otherwise you'll just undo okay. all that mm. anticoagulation again. And it's going to run counter current to the blood flow so that it can um, have those diffusive effects. And then your 
effluent line is a negative pressure which is sucked and drawn off the back there and out through the yellow tubing and into the effluent bag. Got it. Yeah? yeah. So all these, all these guides, so that one's going to gun through yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. that's green on green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you can, where you, do you clip that in, clip that yeah. in, bother or be right? For the OCD, ICU nurse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends which side your patient's going to be compared to the machine. So if your patient's going to be that way, then what you could do right. is clip your bloodline in that side and then your return line could sort of go in, follow the lines along okay. and sort of right. keep them out of the way. Yeah. Other places, other people, like you say, OCD, not, too fast. not OCD people. <laughs> you see some people oh, with the hooks all lined up one direction and some go the other way, you know. Everyone's quite nice here, sometimes they're not, you know, they're quite messy. So that's it, in a nutshell, really. All right. What we've got with the prisoner with the um, citrate solution, uh, we're having to use a different dialysate solution. It's got Prisma Zero Cal B22, it's got 22 millimoles of bicarbonate, mm. rather than the hemocells, the standard bicarbonate solution, has got about 32 millimoles. And the reason for that, um, what Yogos was saying, was when we convert citrate into bicarbonate, it does it on a ratio of one to three. So we've got 18 millimoles of citrate in our, in our citrate solution, which means 54 millimoles of bicarbonate equivalent, which means metabolic alkalosis. And that's when you read all the research on citrate, that's why it's a hyponatremia and metabolic alkalosis is the common problems. So what we're actually doing now is dialyzing against a lower bicarbonate dialysate solution to pull the bicarbonate out to um, prevent the metabolic alkalosis issues. So we've got a sort of there's different solutions, 18 millimoles citrate with the B22, that's the combination we use. There's also a more dilute version of citrate which is a 10 2, which is 12 millimole, but it's got some citric acid in there with the sodium tricitrate. So that just prevents the alkalosis issues. So then you can just use a standard um, bicarbonate solution without calcium in it. So you can, there's different combinations for different. The liver's working. Yeah. Correct. And even a liver impairment seems to be okay with citrate. Right. Because the skeletal muscles take quite a bit of slack up as well. Right. But certainly liver failure or really bad liver cirrhosis, no, no yeah. point. And those patients bleed bleeding quite a lot anyway. But, um, I've only ever seen it a couple of times where you've got problems with citrate toxicity. It's, it's not a very common problem, but, I've, but I, don't, I don't get told all the time mm. either. You know, it's not as if I'm sort of doing it all the time. Just, mm. We monitor our ratio of total, every six hours, total calcium to ionised calcium every six hours, I think, as per our protocol. It needs to be around two, four. Um, yeah. Plus base excess, etc. we would monitor. And the only thing we haven't done is we haven't put the warming cable in here. There's two different types of warmers we've got on our Prisma Flex machines. One is a silicon sleeve one like they use in the Royal North Shore. It clips around the bloodline, return lines going back and just warms the blood directly going back. The other form is we break the circuit here. So you put an extension line in here, which we, we call around here like the old-fashioned blood warmers to actually warm the blood that way. So this is a slightly more efficient way, but you get extra blood volume in the circuit. Slightly less efficient, but there's less blood volume in the circuit. So there's a bit of a trade-off between one or the other. But, uh, some units go for one top, some go for the other top. And what are the, so what are the common stuff ups you see? Uh, in our, well, we've been using this machine for probably just under a year mm. in our unit, and I guess the common stuff ups are probably around the whole um, understanding how the calcium and the citrate and calcium works. So wow. I've seen quite a lot of calcium being put run pre-filter. Pre -filter. Yes, which is obviously, there's no point in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's been no adverse effects, I suppose, of that. The, the patient's all the been okay. Kind of yep. As long as you do as you're told, you can't go wrong with mm. it. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and that's the most important thing we always mm. teach people when we do the machine, yes. If it tells you to do it, do it. If it doesn't, it hasn't forgotten. It just doesn't want you to do it, you know. So um, if you do that, you can't really get it wrong setting it up. And you know, like Selena was saying, it's because citrate is a different way of thinking for anticoagulation than heparin. Some people get it straight away, and some people take a little while to do mm. it. And some people they'll do a few bizarre things. They'll test blood from different places. We had a you know once that were testing the um, taking the calcium levels for the patient from here because they didn't have an arterial line. So, but so the citrate's already gone in yeah. here, so the ionised calcium yeah. levels are really low, so they, but they were thinking the patient's ionised calcium levels were really low, yeah. so they're having to infuse copious, copious amounts of calcium in to replace what was quite low. Well, really, they had you know, just taken yeah. it from the wrong place. There's not that many times that these sort of things happen. It is very occasional, but mm. the people do happen to muck it up occasionally get it wrong. I think we, we, have, um, we see quite a bit of confusion around prescribing as well. Um, I think, so the blood flow rate is 
so you need to enter your weight to get your right renal dose obviously so then your um, your citrate your pre blood pump and your um, blood pump are linked in together so you can't set one in independently of the other so once you set a blood flow rate then that's going to set your, your citrate rate so that you get the the dosing right and then your dialysate rate is based on how much you weigh is that right yeah, yeah so that's the one variable that you you can set um, so sometimes I think people also don't understand that, that they're all a little bit locked in um, and they want to change rates um, but we it's yeah, because traditionally when we're running CRT with HEPRA and we're trying to push the blood pump speed, you know, 200, mm. 250, 300-ish. With citrate, we want to go a bit lower. Because, right. again, the reason we go faster is to prevent circuit clotting. So with citrate, that's not an issue, so we run with 150. Again, the, the higher the, the blood pump speed goes with citrate, the higher the pre dilution rate has to go to maintain that ratio of citrate. The bigger citrate, citrate load on the patient, so, and then you know, all come, yeah, and then you've got more risk of citrate toxicity because you're making the liver work harder. So 150 seems to be f absolutely fine. Maybe some places go for 180 to 200, but you certainly wouldn't want to go any faster than 200. So again, yeah, it, citrate is slightly more prescriptive in how you deliver the pre dilution and the blood pump speed, and as I said, the dialysate and any replacement going post dilution. We've got a bit of flexibility to adjust those things depending on your weight of your patient to get mm. your, your meals per kilo proud.